What's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about the importance of live well care during the summer. So during the summer the water gets really hot and it really takes a toll on some of these fish and today we're going to talk about some of the tips that I use during the summer to really um, help those fish have a good chance of uh, making it to weigh in and then obviously the most important part is making it um, after weigh in so that we can go and catch them again. There's a few key things that are really important when it comes to live work, well care in the summer and that is ice and that's aeration and then obviously you want to make sure that your um, live wells are clean and all your pumps aren't going to get clogged up. So today we're going to kind of walk through some of the things that I do to uh, really help with all this. So let's start out with making sure that the live wells are clean. I don't do a whole lot of like uh, cleaning solutions and stuff in my live wells because I'm afraid it'll really mess things up. But I do wipe them down um, and make sure that I get all the uh, stuff from previous tournaments out of there. And the main, the main thing to me is the uh, live well pump screens. So if I can get one of these out for you and show you, the, uh, the screens on these things can get really clogged up. A lot of times these live well screens, I don't know if you could see it, but they'll get uh, just nasty stuff from the fish, whether it's the slime or stuff from the water, or um, sometimes there'll be scales clogging it up, or if a fish regurgitates a uh, bait fish or something, that will get kind of sucked into that pump and um, it'll clog these screens. And if you clog these screens, you don't get water aerating and circulating in your live well, and it really can... Uh, you won't even notice it until the end of the day and your fish will be really struggling because of that. Another thing I had one time when I was in Iowa fishing the Mississippi River, there was a mayfly hatch and all these fish were uh, spitting up mayflies when I caught them. And at the end of the day, this thing was coated with like an eighth inch of just mayfly guts and it was really disgusting. But at the end of each day, I had to take a hose and spray out the, uh, the live well screen or else I had issues with the uh, fish struggling at the end of the day or, or um, even potentially dying. So that is really key is to make sure that this thing's clean. So there's two of them in mind. There's one that's for pumping the water out and there's another for um, recirculating it. You wanna make sure that those are really clean and um, you don't have anything getting clogged up so that you don't have, prevent the uh, circulation of your water in there. Another little trick I use is pool noodles. And what I do is I put these in my live well and they'll float and it, it gives the fish a little extra layer of protection over the top of the, uh, the lid so that they're not basically, if, I'm, if I get in rough water, the only time I really use these is when it's rough water or anything like that. I, I don't want the fish banging up against the top of the, uh, the live well lid. So I'll throw five or six of these in that I cut to the size of my live well. And um, it really protects those fish from hitting their heads up against the top of the live well. So now let's talk ice. Ice is really important in the summertime and you don't want to overdo it though because if you overdo it you can put those fish into shock. So a lot of times when it's really hot outside what I'll do is I'll put a uh, frozen water bottle in the bottom of it before the tournament even starts. Um, but then if it's kind of like it, it's hot but it's not crazy hot then I'll, I'll have my, my water bottles ready to go in my cooler so that they stay cold. If you put it in ahead of time that allows your live well to cool down so that whenever you do go to put the fish in it's not like toasting like an oven in there and it's already kind of starting to chill down. But like I said about being in shock you don't want to put your fish into a situation where they drop from let's say 80 degree water temperature down to like 70 degrees. You want to like keep it within five degrees at a time and you don't want to just dump a ton of ice in there to where the fish go into shock and it actually does worse, more worse than it does good. So I like to, when I put my um, ice in there, what I'll do is I will come to my live well and I'll either grab two small frozen water bottles and put one of those in a live well or I'll put one of these bigger ones in there and it, it doesn't drop the water temperature too much to where it will um, put those fish into shock. And then throughout the day what I'll do is I will um, add more or whenever I go and switch water I'll add more also. And the reason I use the water bottles is I've used ice before and I don't think it's really an issue but I don't really like chancing it. The ice sometimes has chemicals in it and stuff whereas this is all the ice is frozen within and it's contained inside that water bottle so um, it doesn't, uh, it won't let 
those chemicals get to the actual fish. Another thing I've seen people do is they will freeze the water bottles with G juice and then they'll leave the cap off of it. And what that does is whenever it melts, that G juice kind of goes into the water and it allows basically the best of both worlds. You'll have the G juice in there and you'll have the ice and it's all kind of contained in the exact amounts rather than having to measure it out when you do catch a fish and want to put G juice in there. So basically when it gets to about 75 degrees is whenever I start really putting ice in my live well. Like I said, I don't want to overdo it, but I want to keep those fish comfortable in that, in that live well. Basically every two to three hours, I will replace the water. I'll pump all my water out, pump new water in. And what that'll do is it'll uh, make sure that we're not depleting the oxygen by having those fish contained in a small little area. And when I do that, it's important to remember to replace your G juice, replace your ice, because you're pumping new water in from the top of the surface and it's probably another 80 degrees or whatever the water temperature is. And you're putting that into the live well and all that ice that you had before is going out. So you wanna replace that ice and drop that temperature again. So basically you're redoing the process every two to three hours to make sure that those fish stay as healthy as possible. As far as aerators, I, uh, I like to run my aerator on constant during the summer and that basically will just constantly allow oxygen to keep coming into the water. And you'll see bubbles and stuff at the top of the water. That's oxygen that's coming and uh, helping those fish be healthy as possible and survive. And I also have an oxygenator in my live well. And if you have one of those, you want to run that all the time too. It will um, basically, like I said, just add oxygen to that live well. So you basically don't want those fish to um, start feeling bad with depleting the oxygen in that live well. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.